Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Yannick, I'm the French guy from Switzerland. And tonight on this stream, uh, I'm going to set up um, an environment to develop an app uh, with Angular for the front end and PHP for the back end. Uh, so this is because I've been asked to write a small app and I thought, well, I'm going to set up my environment. I did some some tests before, uh, but I thought this could be interesting to have um, on a video, so I can share that with uh, anybody who can be um, who may be interested in in doing such a thing. Um, I know just enough about Angular to you know, be fluent, I would say, with, with that and also with uh, my good friend the internet, so I can. I know what I'm looking for uh, when I have a, a problem. I know I have seen uh, what I want to do, so I know how to look for it uh, online. And also uh, on the PHP side, I already wrote a lot of PHP apps, so uh, I'm, I'm also uh, confident uh, ab ab about that. Although, fair warning, I am not an expert at either uh, those technology. I don't pretend to um, make a in-depth tutorial. I'm just going to go through the steps um, that I need to go through to set up my environment. Uh, I'm going to take a few shortcuts because there are some stuff that are not really interesting to see, but that, uh, you know, once they're done, they're done once, uh, well, they just copy and paste and that's it. Um, and that would mainly be the um, Nginx configuration to allow for cross-site cross, cross -site, uh, scripting, so to allow the front-end to call the back-end uh, with JavaScript. Hello, programmer. Thank you once again for joining me on the stream. Uh, it's always nice to have company when doing those things. Uh, so, um, yes, as I was saying, I'm going to show how to set up an environment to do, do to code uh, an app with uh, Angular as the front end and PHP as the back end. So let's dive into that. Um, I have taken a few notes. I'm going to follow my notes. Hopefully, things are gonna go uh, smooth and uh, we, we will have a functioning yet not very beautiful uh, app uh, at the end of this stream. So that's my terminal here my uh, beloved Visual Studio code here and here we have our browser that's uh, currently showing the Ubuntu Mate website but that's gonna change very soon. Okay so I have made a folder on my disk um, so it's gonna be stream demo for the root of that and we are going to create the front end now. We're going to start with the front end. So we, we're going to use Angular. Um, there's uh, a lot of documentation about Angular. Uh, if you want to see how to set up your local environment, that's oops, that's not what I that's not what I wanted to do. Um, why isn't? Ah, uh, there it is. It's working. Okay, so I will put the um, the link in the show notes that's angular.io slash guide slash setup local and it explains how to install angular it's a node.js app so you have to do a few steps and you have uh, here tutorials on on the website and i strongly suggest if you have never written an angular app to follow this tutorial it's really interesting everything Almost everything you need to know to write basic uh, basic app apps is here. And when I say basic, it's not so basic because you don't know how to do what we're going to do tonight, which is um, install a router, a navigation, get that data from a web server and so on. So that's uh, pretty much everything we're going to do tonight. So if you have that, then you are good. So let's uh, start now. Uh, I have... Oh, what? 
I have some windows that popped in front of my OBS, so I need to get rid of that. Okay, so we're in the stream now. We're going to build the front end. The command line tool for Angular is called ng. Uh, there's a reason for that, which I don't really remember, but it's called ng. So we're going to generate a... Nope. ng new. So that's the new app that we're going to create. Generate is for later uh, when we're going to, ge to generate our components. So ng new, and we're going to call that front. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, would you like to add Angular routing? Yes, I would like to. I want SCSS for my styles, although we're not going to create any styles tonight. And then it's going to uh, do its, its work. It's installing lots of NPM packages. Um, it takes a little bit of time uh, when you create an app, but then when you generate the components and then uh, it, it's almost instantaneous and there's a live server so development with angular is really really fast and really uh, uh, really nice uh, to to do so the package are installed and there we go and now it's asking for uh, no it doesn't it did commit automatically commit uh, this stage so this is a git repository now and uh, well if i go to the right folder it's going to be a git rep repository git status right so that's in french sorry <laughs> uh, on the main branch and uh, nothing to commit the working copy is clean okay so what do we have here we have lots of files let's open that in visual studio code of course it opens another visual studio I, as i as if i needed that I don't need another Visual Studio, which doesn't even work. I don't know why. Okay, that's that's great. Uh, you know, live streaming, and nothing works. <laughs> All right, let's kill that if we can. Ooh, why do I have so many Visual Studios? Oh, I have one here. Oh, that's the one I have. What well, I wonder if I can. F yes. Can force kit that. I still have lots of. Uh, oh, those are not Visual Studio thing. Those are Chrome's. Okay. All right. Let's try again. Got that. Ah, that's much better. Yes, I trust the authors of those files because that's mainly me. Uh, I'm going to reposition this window so you guys can see. And I'm going to put that right here. Okay. Right, so we have a lot of stuff here. We have uh, our source and then a lot of configuration and stuff like that. We don't really need to care about that. All we need care about is um, not even these files. Uh, not even this one. We care about what's in this folder, actually. Um, this is already a working Angular app, and to show that, I'm going to run. Uh, I'm going to start a new terminal. I'm going to split this one in two, and I'm going to run ng serve. Um, yes, why not dash dash open? It should compile the app and open a, a web browser. Hopefully, it's going to open another tab in the. Uh, yes, it did. Right, so um, you can see it on the stream, but that's localhost column 4200. 4, so that's the uh, local port that it, this development server is uh, is running. And this is a live server. And to show you, to prove that it's a live server, I'm going to edit one file, this one, app component HTML. And I'm going to remove everything from it and save. And boom, it has disappeared. And if I say hello, application and save that boom hello application appears uh, on my screen neat uh, let's try something uh, just just to show that it's really an, an angular app in case we had doubts 
If we go to the component.ts, that's TypeScript, that's the language uh, Angular, J, uh, Angular uses, we can see that in this component, so that's app component, and that's app component HTML, okay, we can see that this component has a property called title. And we also can see that this component uses app component HTML as its template. If you go and read the tutorials, this is going to be really clear. It, I, I don't find it very complex because maybe that's because I have done that a million times, but uh, this part describes what is linked to this class here. So template uh, and here we have a property. So what we can do is go to the template and instead of hello application, we can uh, put double uh, curly braces and you can see immediately that fails. And then we can put title here and now we get hello front. Why? Well, because this component here, this template is going to look into this component for a property named title and then replace the whole thing here with the value of the property and let's prove that uh, by doing this front end of the application and save that and then on the web browser we can see immediately hello front end of the application so we have a running angular application already now, what I want to do in, in the app that I'm going to uh, develop around this, I'm going to have a, a, a menu, some, some kind of static uh, things that are common to every pages, and then links that will update the central part here. So let's uh, do things like that. Let's say this is H1, for example. OK. Um, Right, and then we're gonna want to have a component in there. We're gonna want to have uh, some information when we load the application and then maybe a link to go somewhere else. That is called a root. Uh, so we need to add some root information. We need to tell Angular, okay, if we're on the default page, then we need to go to the slash, I don't know, main uh, URL and then we're going to have two links to go from main to secondary, for example. OK, so we need to tell Angular that below this text is going to be the uh, place where it's going to have to insert our components. And that is done with this tag there. So that's telling Angular now resolve the, the URL and replace whatever is requested in this tag. And I'm showing that with my hand, and of course you cannot see what I'm doing. OK, um, so we're going to display two components in there, uh, main and secondary, for example. Why not? So let's go back to our terminal. Uh, here you can see we have changed stuff, and it's recompiling on the fly. So now if we go to N to the, the terminal and generate a component that we're going to call main, and you can see that fish is uh, revealing that I have already done that many times. And so I'm going to generate another component, a secondary component. And here, the application is still working. Of course, we haven't changed anything yet, so there's no reason why it wouldn't work. Okay. When we created this app with the ng, ng new uh, command line, it asked us if we wanted to add routing. So I said, yeah, I want. And then it did generate this thing for me. So this thing is everything you need to have to configure uh, routing, except, of course, the routes. And they are here. So let's configure our routes. OK. So in order to do that, we're going to, to tell Angular, OK, if the path, uh, um, the path for the main component is main, and the component to use when we are there is the main component. OK, 
lots of stuff happened here. I have in uh, in Visual Studio, I have extensions for Angular, J uh, Angular not AngularJS. Uh, this one is installed, Angular Language Service. And I think it's pretty much it, it does a lot. Yes, it does everything. What that does, it's going to look when I, I, I typed main component, it, it looked into the application and it found that main component was stored in this, uh, in this file. So it automatically added the import. This, if you do some Angular apps, this is magic. Because if you don't have that, it's gonna, it's gonna be a pain in the backside to remember where to import the, the components and, and where they are, which file they are. And, and it's a nightmare if you don't have uh, stuff like that. So let's go to, the, let's do a secondary component. So if we go to this path, then we want to display the secondary component. And also the, the, the auto completion is something that, uh, yeah, if you don't have that, I don't know, you can survive if you, do, if you don't have that. And we're going to also have, because I'm, I'm lazy and I don't want to type slash main every time, a default path. So if the path is nothing, then we're going to redirect to slash main. And that's a really a redirect and that's not using the component with the, uh, the URL, the empty URL. And we need to add patch path path match <laughs> to full uh, I don't really remember why but I know I know if you don't do that then it's not working and you cannot really see here something has changed now we have main works see and see the uh, you don't see uh, you can't see the URL let me resize my brother window there we go so that's slash main now if I remove slash main it will redirect me to slash main and then we told he told uh, angular here that we have a second path that it's secondary and so if we type secondary here secondary works well where does that come from let's have a look at the main component so that's the same thing as uh, earlier for the uh, app component so we have a class that does the, the logic of this component and it is linked or associated with or I don't know how to, uh, you say that but the template for this component is main component.html so let's have a look at main component.html it says main works and that's where this text comes comes from and you can see that we still have hello front end of the application here which means we have this text that's permanently permanently there but then we told Angular that this was the router outlet. And so it's going to insert the content of the components, the active component that is defined by the URL here inside this thing. And if I add like a H2, this is the footer. Then we have the footer that is here. And if we go to the secondary, we have secondary works and the footer here. So everything is working just great. That's awesome. Uh, but let's just have a look for the fun uh, at adding some navigation link. So let's go to the app component here. And let's do, some, let's do that. Let's have a nav, which is not necessary, necessarily a good idea, but hey. And we're going to add a new tag well a new attribute to a known tag okay that's going to be the main component okay and a router link equal link equals secondary secondary component okay ah, yeah. okay um let's do this don't do that at home nbsp that's not how you do things okay let's let's just be clear this is because i don't want to 
spend my t my stream time doing padding and margin and stuff like that but don't do uh, um percent paint bsp semicolon or whatever this this one is uh that's bad practice but now we have two links okay so this new attribute to the a tag tells angular okay generate whatever is necessary in terms of javascript and events and and things like that to go to the main component and then to go to the secondary component okay so if we click main main works secondary secondary works yeehaw hello monica welcome to the stream i am building an angular app uh, using well i'm building an app using angular and for the front end and php for the back end so uh, you're gonna have to go back to the beginning of the stream uh, later on if you want to see how i started that um is mr monica here uh, i thought you were uh, you said you were gonna invite him all right okay so we have our components they work perfect i have my the basis for my uh, uh, for my app. I'm not gonna go too deep into this part of the uh, the app. Uh, basically, what I'm what I would do now is get uh, fr from the app component, which is the basically the main component of my application. I would place uh, stuff like menu bar and footer and generic maybe a sidebar if I have one although the app that I'm gonna do uh, after the after the stream it doesn't have a, a sidebar it's gonna be a, a an app that's targeted for mobile so it's probably only gonna have a, a nav bar at the top and then a few components in there but that's the the, the same principle right instead of uh, having uh, a links that uh, you would have in a regular HTML app you have a router link and then you specify the uh, the uh, the component the, the path to the components you want to use okay let's uh, let's do something a little bit more interesting when when we arrive to this main component I want to do a query I want to get some data I want to display a list of person that's my uh, that's my goal. I want to display a list of person. Uh, let let me go back to my uh, show notes here. Yes, that's uh, uh, that's what we want to do. So we usually don't call uh, don't don't make business call if I can uh, exp explain explain uh, I can say that. Uh, directly from the component the component is really uh, something to to show the data here so if we had to if we have to go and get some data somewhere we're not gonna call an api from here we're gonna use a service that we're going to inject in there okay so let's do that let's do exactly that uh, let's get our terminal here and we're going to use the angular command line once again that's still called ng we're going to generate a service that is called person again fish is uh, is uh, not telling you that i've done that already okay it it uh, generated a service for me let's have a look at this thing it's really basic it has a const an empty constructor and it doesn't do anything okay what can we do with this service well, we're going to go back to our main component, which is here, and we need to use this service. In Angular, uh, you never, ever, ever, ever create new objects. You let Angular do that for you. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to tell Angular that this component needs the person service. And to do that, we're going to go to the constructor here, and we're going to define a private uh, um, argument to the constructor. So that's going to be person service column. That's that tells uh, that's the TypeScript uh, syntax to tell to to say okay this is the name of 
the uh, parameter to the, the constructor and this is the type of the uh, of this parameter and with that when angular is going to build this component it's going to see that it needs an instance of person service and it's going to go and build it for us and or reuse it if it already exists so that's that's all we have to do uh, we have a service that doesn't do anything so it doesn't help us right now let me bring this uh, here because it's going to be useful at some point okay what can we do well we sh should probably have a method or a function on this service to get our list of person right so using my wonderful visual studio code i should be able to control click here and it brings me directly to the class and that my wonderful Again, if you if you do Angular, get Visual Studio code and get the Angular uh, plugins, it will do 90% of the work for you, all the, the all the boring work for you. That's absolutely uh, uh, amazing. So we're gonna define a function in there that's gonna be called get persons. Okay, so that's defined. That defines a function. This function will return a an array of person all right okay and now we have our first problem well, we have two problems we have this person uh, class that doesn't exist and we don't return return anything so let's do let's do let's create the the person class okay which is actually an interface so there's no generator for that because how can i could uh angular know what this means it doesn't mean anything to Angular, it only means something to us. So we're going to click on the app folder, go to the uh, new file icon, click on that, and we're going to call that uh, person.ts. Yes, I think that's that. Uh, and then I'm looking at my notes because I don't remember the syntax exactly. So yes, we're going to export an interface that is called person all right and this thing is gonna have two attributes it's gonna have, have an id which is gonna be a number and name which is gonna be a string now obviously in real applications those objects will be a lot more complex than that but those objects should never ever 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 do any logic they should only be interface uh, interfaces and have only attributes because those are the the, uh, the data objects that you are going to uh, manipulate and then the service the different services will take those objects and do stuff with with them but you should never have a function in there that does something okay well we still have the squigglies here because uh, we haven't told on, uh, on um, VS Code that this class now exists. So I'm going to hit uh, Control dot on my keyboard, and it uh, is going to um, uh, propose me pr um, uh, suggest that I import person, or I can also instead of uh, doing Control dot, I can do Control space, and we can see that uh, we should use this, and it says here auto import, and that's what I'm going to do okay what's wrong now oh now it says you have declared a function that returns an array but you're not returning anything and it does that politely because if i was uh if i was with studio i would probably add some non-safe for work words here <laughs> right so that's the syntax to create an, an array but what did we put in person we put id and name Okay, so let's have ID one, name, Alice, and then let's add a couple more, Bob. Uh, go. Ooh. And then we should be good. And now, if I click, if I save that, now the application is working again. It doesn't do much more than last time because we haven't changed the front, but it's doing stuff. Okay, what uh, can we do 
Now, so we're back in the main component. We have injected a person service. Let's call the function get person on this service. Okay, you might be, uh, you might you might know how to code in in an object oriented program, uh, like uh, uh, Python, uh, uh, PHP in some in some way, Java, C sharp, and stuff like that. And you may wonder, but why don't we do? Why don't we call something in the constructor? Well, that's because of the dependency injection. So this thing here is a dependency injection. We are not creating the main component. We're not creating person service. We are letting Angular do that. And what Angular is going to do is going to create every, every single object we need before it then calls ng on init. That's only a, when Angular calls this function that we know everything we need is ready. So that's why we're going to um, call our service now method service method uh, from here and not from the constructor. So we have a person service and it has a get person method. Okay, we should probably store that somewhere. And as we have seen with let let's go back quickly to the app component here. The app component had a property title that we were able to use here in the um, template. Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. We're going to do this dot persons equals that. And now it complains because it doesn't know what uh, persons here is. So let's do that. Person is an array of person. And by default, it's empty. And now it doesn't know what person is. So control space and auto import. And that didn't work. Okay, so let's use the second one. All right. We are back to having nothing on the screen, but it's a, um, it's a progress because uh, like a few seconds before we had uh, an error on the screen. We don't have anything new because we didn't change the template for this component. It still main works. We're going to change that now. Now we're going to display the list of persons. So instead of main works, let's go with h3, list of persons. Okay, and now let's go ul. And we're going to use a special Angular syntax. I'm going to type it and then I'm going to explain it. Okay, and we need a div, and we're going to type person ID and person name. Right, let me explain what I have just done. It is magic. It is wonderful. So we all know the li tag, which is a list item, and the ul, which is an unordered list. But then we have this new attribute. This is uh, specific to Angular. And what we're doing here, we're telling Angular, okay, we we have a collection that is called person. And if we go back to the component for a moment, that's this w exact one here. This one is empty at first, but then when we initialize the component, we set the value of person to the value we get from the service. That's going to be useful later on. And now we we let, we're telling Angular, okay, for each item in this collection, let's call it person and do this tag, this whole thing, as many times as there are persons in, in this list, okay? And so now, inside this uh, ng, uh, star ng4 attribute, well, no, inside the node that has this attribute, we can access person dot id and person dot name just for a quick reminder the dot id and dot name are the things we have set here id and name in the uh, person interface okay so we have looped over our list of person and we have shown that let's quickly show something if i go back to my person service and then here add 
ID for name uh, Eric. Save that. Boom, Eric appears. Well, Monica, that's great. My job is uh, is done. If uh, if uh, I can uh, explain how it works and how I can put it together, the idea for this stream was really to have a an archive, a video archive, for me uh, to go back when I when in six months from now I'm gonna have to do that again for another app. And instead of going, you know, uh, getting my show notes and stuff, like that, I can I can watch my own stream. <laughs> That's really the goal. And if I can, you know, share the knowledge, then all the better. Uh, so there we go. Yes. So uh, let's let's say we, we remove Bob and then Bob, Bob goes away. And if we can navigate to the second component and go, come back and we still have our, our data here. Right. So let's uh, bring Bob back for the moment. Okay, so that's... Um, that's how I did that. Um, I could, I could do something here. For example, I could go and add a a. Uh, that's uh, Navlink. Uh, what, what's the name uh, of the thing I'm looking for? What's the name of the thing I'm looking for? Router link. Router link. So I could do a. Router link equals uh, I don't know details slash person dot id. Okay, um, yeah, edit, and there we go. We have a, an edit button. So probably we wouldn't do that, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see it goes to details one, two, three, four. And if I had a service for that, I, I would need a, I would need a root, uh, a root uh, in my routing module here. So I would probably need some some shenanigan here to uh, make that a, a valid URL. But oh, here you can see uh, something that's really interesting in Angular. If I click on this link, nothing happens, or nothing seems to happen. But what it does, in fact, it's fa falling to this last line. Oops, to this last line, which says, "Okay, if you don't know, if you don't know what I'm asking for, go back to main." And that's why nothing happens. It doesn't crash. That's that's uh, the, the interesting point. Okay, so but the the the, the title of this stream was Angular with PHP. So we've done the Angular part. Now I want to get this uh, this thing from a PHP web service. Um, there is some some magic to do. I'm going to show you the magic because, of course, Angular is now running on the development server, and so it's port uh, 4200 but my PHP script is going to run on port 80 uh, because I'm going to use Nginx and PHP FPM and all, the, all those good things. So uh, my brother will, brother won't, will refuse to do that because of um, cross-origin cross restriction. What's this called? It's cross-origin scripting or something like that? Yes. So the, the stuff that <coughs> uh, prevents uh, a web page to access a service on another uh, domain or another port. So I have done some magic. Let's open this terminal a little bit bigger and vi atc nginx site enabled. Uh, that's demo demo Angular, I guess. Yes. So that's the uh, that's the magic you have to do. I'm not gonna go over that, but. Basically, you, that's that's this thing. You need to allow <coughs> allow region star and uh, tell Nginx that's okay. I know uh, someone is gonna come and get the file that's not from that, uh, uh, not Nginx, the the the, the web browser. Uh, say okay, you you can you can do this. It's allowed. Okay, let's now go to the PHP side of things. 
So I'm going to go back one folder here, where one, up, uh, one level up, uh, and go where we had our front uh, folder, where we uh, put the, uh, the Angular stuff. We're going to create a back folder. Okay. And we're going to open Visual Studio Code. It, it works, nice. Okay. Let's put this one on top of the other one. Okay. Somewhere around here. Do -do -do. There we go. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything. Let's make sure that everything is working properly. And I'm going to do my preferred test, which is to display the PHP info page. Right. So I have already prepared that, obviously. So if I go to demo angular.lock, and that doesn't work because I haven't requested this page. Okay, so we have PHP info, so we know that Nginx is working and PHP is working and everything else is working. And that is great. To build this backend, I am going to use Composer. So Composer, if you don't know, is a package manager for PHP. And it also provides ways to auto load your own class classes. Uh, we are going also to use um, a framework that is called, that is named uh, Slim, Slim framework, uh, which allows us to define uh, roots uh, also in, uh, in the backend. Uh, and uh, call um, a function, a specific, specific function, which I guess it's a controller uh, for each of those routes. And we're also going to use the PHP uh, dependency injection module. Although for this demo, it's not going to be really useful, but I know I'm going to use it later on. So um, let's, um, let's do this. Let's go to our terminal. We are in the back, uh, back of backend uh, section of our application, and we're going to call composer init. Okay, uh, I'm going to say yes to almost everything. Uh, would you like to define your dependencies? No, no. Okay, to confirm generation, yes. <coughs> okay, so now I know I need the. Dependency, dependency injection uh, module for PHP. So composer require PHPDI, PHPDIs. That's the dependency injection. I need slim slim. That's the slim framework. I need slim HTTP. That's for returning JSON, uh, JSON format uh, more easily. And we're gonna need Slim PSR7. And uh, that's pretty much all we need now. Just for fun, Composer install, I think, but everything is already there. That's great. Um, I need to tell uh, this thing. Da, 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 da. Where, uh, uh, something is missing. Uh, I'm missing something. Do, 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 do. Uh, where is it? I'm missing the uh, the uh, the auto loader, so I need to find my auto loader. Mm hmm. Let give me give me a few moments. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm looking for because I don't remember the exact the exact syntax. That I need to add somewhere here. Uh, is that PSR4? Uh, I think it's PSR4, although I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
where did I put that? Where did I put that? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry about that. I am sorry about that. Ah, I'm going to... I know. I know where I can find that. Of course, the Hotshot Racing, wonderful, uh, over-engineered uh, points calculator. It should have everything I need. Yes, it does. Okay, I'm back. So I need to add an auto load. See why I want to have a, a video of what I have to do. That's because I always forget about those stuff. And we are going to call this, I don't know, uh, API. And that's going to be the namespace. I mean, actually, I don't know why I'm looking for that because I, I'm not going to use that for this <laughs> for this uh, demo. But anyway, it's there. So that that that's for uh, later, maybe an, uh, a later stream uh, when we do that. Okay, enough of that. Uh, we uh, are going to create an index.php file. The way, the way this is going to work um, is that every request that is going to arrive on this server will be redirected to index.php. So whatever I type here in the URL, if I go to demoangular.log slash whatever, if that, that whatever is not a physical file, then it's going to be redirected to index.php. Uh, I hope that that's clear. That's a catch-all if you want. Everything's gonna go there. Okay, and now we are going to do the boilerplate code. Uh, that's not very interesting, but that needs to be there. Oops, I need to require uh, vendor slash autoload okay and I'm going I'm, I will need to create a new container builder okay um, again again anyone who's doing some PHP needs to install a few extensions in Visual Studio Code and more importantly the more important ones are this one PHP IntelliFence and PHP Debug. Those two will take care of all the boring stuff that consists of uh, you know, using, the, so imp importing this. It's the same as with Angular. It's just, you don't have to remember those stuff and you can concentrate on doing your code. So now if I need the container, I need container builder and I type an arrow and it's going to uh, pr um, suggest uh, method calls. Okay, um, what do I need? I need app factory. So see, I just typed appf. It knows that that's what I want because apparently that's the only choice, that's the only possibility I have after typing those four letters. Four letters I typed. Now I do enter and it completes that and also it goes over there and uses uh, that thing, which is exactly what I would have to do. But if I didn't have this extension, I wouldn't see that. And then I would run my app and then it would tell me, oh, you forgot to import that. And it's really a time saver. So set container. And I'm going to set the container. And now I need app equals app factory, colon, colon, uh, build. No. Uh, it yes okay and app column run okay but that does nothing just yet but if we go there and say okay get I think it's slash, slash API slash persons and then we're going to define a function it takes a request that we don't care about we need a response, which is a slim HTTP. So that's this one because we're going to need that and args if we happen to have args, which we don't right now. 
Ok. Um, we're going to do this. So that's going to be an array of, of arrays, I guess. And we're going to have an ID. We're going to change the IDs so we can see the difference between uh, this and what we're going to do here. So ID 10, name, uh, I don't know, uh, Wonderland Alice. And ID 20, name equals uh, SpongeBob. Okay. Uh, it doesn't like that. Why? Why? What did I do? What did I? Oh, yes. Sorry, that's PHP. That's not. That's no longer TypeScript. So we need to adapt to the syntax of the language. But still, it doesn't want that. Why? Because I'm an idiot. There we go. And so now we want to res return. We want to return the response with JSON, and we're going to pass that as our response. And let's check here if we go here and go API persons. Bing. We've got our information. So we've just coded a web service, just like that. Uh, so using uh, using a slim framework, we're not taking uh, advantage of the, um, the, con the the dependency injection container just yet. Um, I, I think I'm going to do another stream with uh, you know more more in depth uh, things in the uh, in the back end and maybe a few amelioration in the front end. But I, I just wanted to have this setup. Okay. We have that. So we're going to copy this URL. We're going to need that when we go back to our, the Angular side of things. Because we now have a web service, we need to call this web service from our Angular app and replace this list by this list. OK, let's do that. Um, to do these things in Angular, there are uh, one notion that is uh, well, it 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 needs to be done once, but it's also, I so often I often forget that is that this is this is a module app dot module that's our module. Um, how can I say uh, uh, define that? It's uh, the the module is going to be a group of components. Uh, it's like it's like a cabinet. I don't know a file cabinet where you have all your files in there, and that's that makes your uh, you know, your archive for 2021. And if you want, if I want in this module, if I want to use another module, I need to tell this this one that, hey, I'm going to use that, uh, that second one. And the second one, the one we're going to use is the HTTP client module because we're going to call a web service. So we're going to do that over HTTP. So, Let's uh, go in the import for this ng module. So that's app app .ts, the typescript. And let's see, is it clever enough to know what I want? No, it is not clever enough to know what I want. So I'm gonna have to import that by hand. Okay, uh, quick tip I learned. Uh, you know, we're doing these things. If you start typing here that you want the HTTP client module, it doesn't know. Oh, well, I guess it uh, it did um, uh, change since last time I did, I did that. So last time I did that, it, it, it couldn't know anything. So what I used to do is this. I used to do import and nothing here from Angular common HTTP, and now it knew, and now it was I was able to do HTTP client module. But apparently now it knows, so that's great. It evolves.
Okay. Uh, I think now we have this defined, so we can now use all the function and all the method, all the classes and stuff like that from this module in our module. Fine, let's close this app module that I often never open and go back to doing some real work. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, we're going to do that. Okay. So we need to go back to our service. Where is our service? Person service. It's there. Okay. And instead of returning this hard coded, those hard coded values, we're going to call a service, which I agree, we'll return some other hard-coded values, but that's not... Right now, the, the idea is to make the call to this service, and then we're going to... This web service in PHP will eventually get the, the data from a database. But okay, we need to inject some stuff in there. We need to inject the HTTP client, which will allow us to call the web service. So we do the same thing we did last time. We're going to define a private uh, attribute to the constructor and that's going to be an HTTP client. Okay, and thank you uh, Visual Studio Code for doing all the hard work for me. All right, uh, let's come on that uh, just to have it in, uh, you know, under our, our eyes. Now, we need to, instead of calling, of, of returning hard-coded value, we, we're going to use our HTTP client. So that's this, that's HTTP, that's the name we gave here. Then we're going to call get, so that's going to be a get um, a request to the web server. We're going to tell the get method that we are expecting an array of person and we're going to give it the URL where we want to uh, where we want to go and fetch those data and we're going to return that aha uh -huh. it is not working it is not working because this is now an asynchron asynchronous call which means we're going to get into this method get persons our web browser will uh, send a request, but then this this here will return without uh, waiting. It's not going to be um, it's not going to be a, a blocking call. So it's not returning an array of person. It is returning an observable, observable, observable. Yes, yes, this one of person. Okay, it it's it doesn't really change the well it, it kind of does but what what we're doing here is telling whoever is going to call this method okay here's an object we don't have the results yet but you can subscribe to that object and we will call you uh, when everything is ready you know it's like when you go to uh, I don't know uh, uh, the the, the uh, some some kind of uh, administration or something like that and, and they you know you you ask your question or you fill a form and then they tell you okay sit down and we'll call you back when when we are done that's exactly the same thing <laughs> so if we look here visual studio uh colored that in red so that means there's a problem here let's go here and watch yes indeed this this that person which is this attribute here is an array of person but this now returns an observable of array of person so we need to change the way we treat this logic what we need to do is get persons right but then we subscribe to that and that will um, uh, and then a subscribe will be called when the data comes back and uh, it's going to be provided with said data. So we need to define this function. This is a lambda function for those who know what lambda are. Okay. Let me explain now what, what this does. Um, 
this that person service that get persons that's the service we just wrote returns an observable of array of person and so we can subscribe to that observable and it will call whatever function name is in there whatever function is in there when the data is ready and that i could have probably uh, i probably can change that and have a, a function i don't know if that would work let's see uh, uh, got uh, uh, service re service return return uh, and it takes a person's person uh, array of person okay and I think I could do this and then say service return yes so when when this object is ready when this uh, we subscribe to this object and when it's ready call this function call this service return and then we would arrive there and then we would do this dot persons equals persons and if we go there that doesn't work huh. that is weird that is weird maybe i made uh, i didn't do that properly persons this dot ah, I can't type tonight. This dot persons equals persons fail. Why? Let's go and have a look at our terminal. Not this one, the other one. Ooh, I apparently made more more mess than I anticipated so uh, there we go so i'm um, now i'm curious as why the other uh way didn't work but you can see now that we have 10 and 20 instead of one two three and four and that's because our uh, the, the this data is coming from our web service uh, can we can we update the web service and see if that updates the front? I have I have doubts that it does that, but let's say ID thirty name uh, 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 Do you know any any Carol? Well, it, that's okay. We don't need any Carol now i'm going to save that of course it's not going to update immediately but if i go to secondary and then here it has been updated because when i come back to this component then everything starts again which means we arrive to this component that's the main component we get in there and we i i believe it is not reconstructed so the constructor is not called again and we go straight to ng ng on init and then it calls the web service and then it updates the person's the person attribute and then the main component because person has been updated it does update the ui on this side <laughs> and so there we have it we have a crude <laughs> angular front end um, which is not pretty but everything is in place to make it prettier um, we have our uh, routing uh, in place so we can load components in the UI uh, we can navigate from one component to another we have the HTTP client in place and so we can call web services and we can respond to um, this web service by updating the UI uh, which is which is great. Uh, one thing that uh, we could we, we could do uh, to show that is it, that everything is dynamic. If we had a, a button in, in here, and when we clicked on the on the button, it would add one entry to the list uh, to this uh, list of person here, and then that would update the uh, the UI automatically. Um, I don't think I need that in in my application, but. Um, 
it's it's something that uh, uh, that is possible. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna go further uh, tonight. I'm going to keep this uh, this workspace, those workspaces as they are, and I'm probably gonna do another stream. Uh, well, not not tomorrow nor Wednesday, uh, but not Thursday because Thursday is gonna be um, the uh, software boot software boutique for Ubuntu Mate. So yeah, maybe sometime in the weekend or next week um, to go a little bit deeper in uh, in the PHP side, like using uh, Fluent to access the database and using the the dependency injection container so that it creates stuff for us the same way uh, DI uh, does does that on the Angular uh, side of things. Uh, so yeah, um, now I have my video archive of uh, how I set up my project. Hopefully this can be useful to someone else if there is something that is not clear please uh, uh, leave a comment uh, not on twitch because that's not possible but this uh, twitch stream will be archived on youtube so leave a comment on youtube on youtube or you can see on the screen right now uh, above my head my uh, twitter handle and my github handle um, I, my, I may put this on twitter later on uh, I'm not sure it's worth being uh, stored forever, but why not? Uh, don't hesitate to send me to ping me on on Twitter if you have a question. Uh, again, leave a comment uh, on on YouTube. Subscribe to my Twitch channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, click on the bell uh, and all those good things. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, if you didn't like that video, give, give me a thumbs down. I don't, I don't care. It's still interaction. It still counts as a, as a reaction uh, for YouTube. So, uh, so you can you can give thumbs down. I don't care. Uh, you can give two thumbs down if you want. <laughs> if you really don't like the video. <laughs> um, so that's it for this stream. Um, I still don't have a stream as ended screen, so it's gonna. It's gonna be an abrupt end. Thank you, ProGamer. Thank you, Monica, for joining me. As I said, when ProGamer arrived, it's always uh, it's always better to have someone in the in the chat when doing these things. I will uh, be back on Twitch tomorrow night, but for something a little bit different. It's the return of uh, Maker's Corner a DIY uh, tech-oriented podcast that I record with my friend uh, Nate. So I'm going to, we're going to stream the recordings on Twitch. Wednesday night, it's the T. Grey Hot recording, another podcast that's a Star Trek fan podcast. That's going to be uh, streamed on Twitch, but it has its own channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, Thursday... Uh, Thursday, I'm going to stream a little bit of Ubuntu Mate Software Boutique. Uh, that's going to be on Twitch. I have set up the uh, the chat. So I have everything set up to stream on Twitch, and it's going to be archived on YouTube also. And uh, I think Eric might do a stream on Wednesday night US uh, East Coast. So that's the middle of the night for, for us in Europe. But whatever, I'm going to... Um, Put the link to all those uh, all those streamers, uh, Monica, Big Bud, Eric. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, the best place to do that is the uh, Wimpy's World Discord server. That's it. <laughs> I had to think about that. Uh, yeah, it's getting a bit late. Uh, uh, yes, I see that, uh, Monica. That you, t you told him you should push it uh, at middle of the night for him, so I can I can see him when I get up. But I don't know when I get up. I'm, I'm really not into st getting straight to Twitch. I you know I I need about an hour to go from my bed to my shower, which is like ten meters away. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I think he, 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 he still, it's still okay that he does that when I sleep and I can watch uh, whenever I want. That's it. Thank you, everybody. I will be back tomorrow with the recording of Maker's Corner and I will be back Thursday for the uh, Ubuntu Matin Boutique. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and ciao, ciao. See you next time. Bye.